existing profiles. Let's do a quick compare and contrast between LAN Desktop and Civil 3D when it comes to constructing existing profiles. Now what I'm working with on the screen will begin with an alignment and also an existing ground surface and from that I would like to create my basis for my roadway design or my beginning existing ground profile so we can see how the horizontal interacts with the vertical. So to do that I have to make sure that I've got the civil design tools installed or loaded so we'll go ahead and grab the civil design workspace to restore that. We're going to go into profiles. There are a number of settings that can be established that can be important depending on the layers uh, that we're going to be using for our profiles, how many profiles are in the drawing. For right now, just in the essence of time, we'll go ahead and set current surface as existing ground. Land is very dependent on existing ground or uh, current properties, whether it be uh, the surface or the alignment. Let's go ahead sample from surface. Those numbers look good. Beginning station 10 plus 0, 0, ending at the end. It's created my profile. Much like surfaces, it's created but we really can't see anything. If we would like to see the results of that, we then need to come in and create the profile. We'll create a full one. We'll go in and put in the parameters do we want to see it from the beginning to the end? What's the datum? Left to right, right to left? Would you like to import a grid? And I'm sure if you've done this before as I have, it's disappointing that a lot of these numbers aren't maintained. So if you need to generate this profile again, you're going to have to go through and set all these options each time you construct it. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and accept the defaults. We'll say OK. We'll pick a point off the side here, delete existing profile layers. Yes, unless I had multiple ones, then I would have to kind of be careful with that. So my profile is constructed and I see the results for myself on the screen. Now with that being said, a couple things in the process. While we can pull profiles, and it does work, there are some pain points that we need to overcome. First we have to deal with a number of, of current settings, current surface, current alignment, to make sure that we're pulling the right profile for the right geometry. Next, does this um, profile accurately represent the surface that it cuts through. The surface, yes. The contours that are represented on the screen, maybe, maybe not. It depends if somebody's changed these contours. So there's always a question of whether or not this accurately reflects, reflects what, we're, uh, what we're really working with. The process itself is not the most intuitive because we build a profile, nothing happens, and then we have to go through and construct some you know, a full profile, surface profile, partial profile, what, you know, what do all those mean? The results are, are not uh, dynamic. If this alignment were to have to change in any way, its uh, location be moved because of a high spot or something that it was running through, the profile from that point would be useless. We would have to start over. Uh, it's very layer driven in that uh, when it comes in it's going to ask us to delete layers. The layers themselves, in this case if we select it, it, the layer is based on the alignment which is good because if we had multiple ones we wouldn't have to worry about deleting them if we were to erase it. But we always have to be pay close attention to the layers. And then finally the display isn't that, that flexible. We've got little to no white space at the top of here. If I was going to work with this and I wanted to add some more space that's difficult to do and the you know the cardinal sin uh, if we uh, were to have somebody do this it just gives me the heebie-jeebies even uh, even doing it on the screen for a demonstration when we create a profile in land desktop if it's something you've worked with before that profile is kind of a sacred object once you start moving it if you know you run into all types of problems because the system always thinks that it was here um, or where it was originally which is why you have all types of commands like um, you know, set current profile, redefine profile, undefined profile, a lot of additional commands. So once again, while we can be successful with it, it is, uh, there's a lot of things that need to be overcome, a lot of things we need to constantly pay attention to um, outside of just worrying about our design process. So with that being said, let's flip over and take a look at a similar exercise in Civil 3D. Rather than constructing these things from scratch, I'm going to go ahead and bring in the data that we were looking at in land. So we'll come in, the project is project EP for existing ground profile. I'm going to bring in the surfaces as well as I'll bring in my um, horizontal alignment. And we don't need the existing ground profile that's been pulled already. We'll create a new one from here. So we'll say OK. Those have been migrated.
if we zoom extents, we see our surface. We also see the alignment that existed in LAN Desktop. So we've pulled it uh, directly from that project. Let's go ahead and create a profile. To do that, Civil 3D being task-based, I'm going to go to the Home tab, which allows me to create things. We will create a profile, and I'm going to create a, sur a surface profile. And if I hover over this, Civil 3D's interface gives me a number of tool tips, walks me through the process, lets me know what's happening, what's going to be required. Much easier to use and to pick up and understand than, than the previous uh, working in land. So we'll create a surface profile. When we create it, one simple dialog box does the entire process. I tell it which alignment, which surface. No confusion, no, hey, did I set that surface current? I don't have to worry about that. I'll go ahead and add that to the list. In addition, similar to land, I have the same tools or options that we would have before. Do you want to sample from the beginning to the end? Do you want to sample offsets? Um, very, uh, very similar with respect to the options that we have available to us in land. So another thing, because the contours are a subset of the surface itself, I need not worry at all about the profile it has created, whether or not it accurately reflects the contours that I see on the screen. Because at the end of the day, it has to. The contours are a reflection of the surface, so there's no question, hey, are these contours correct as it relates to the surface that's in the file? All of those um, doubts will go away. So we've done that. Let's go ahead and draw the profile in the view. So that's going to generate our grid for us. A number of different options, very nice wizard here that we can control the layout. A number of things that we can do. We can split the profile, you know, to help make it easier to see if we were using them for plan and profile sheets. You know what, for right now, if we're going to be leveraging this as a tool to work within LAN Desktop, the additional options that we have are going to be kind of irrelevant for us right now. We'll just go ahead and create the profile view, pick a point on the screen, and my profile is constructed. Now, with my profile constructed, that looks uh, fantastic. I'm happy with that on the screen. One of the biggest things is the, the Civil 3D environment is dynamic, so it's not the one-way street like land. And what I mean by that is if we were to come in and maybe move this alignment, so we move the alignment from uh, here to here, you'll notice as I move that, the profile geometry updates. So a very, very uh, flexible environment with which to work. If I need to make adjustments, I can see the uh, results of those adjustments immediately. I can do a lot of different what-if scenarios. Um, you know, one of the more important things, let's, let's move the, the profile itself up here to the top so we can see a little bit easier. You know, unlike LAN Desktop, where that would have been just a, a terrible thing to do, in Civil 3D it is not a problem at all. We also look at the profile hits the edge of the um, profile viewer, our grid, which uh, uh, designates the start point for the profile as it's station 10 plus 0, 0. Well, how often have we ever wanted to extend? You know, this stops at the center of the intersection, but now the designer or the engineer comes back and says, I need the profile uh, to extend to the other side of the right-of-way. I need to add some more space to that. Well, we can, we can do that very quickly now with this dynamic environment and that I can create a, a circle at the end of my alignment here, maybe an extra 100 feet. And then what I'm going to do is I can grip edit my alignment such that we'll change it to intersect with the alignment and our circle's edge. And in doing so, it has, uh, it has updated the, uh, our profile. So you'll you notice that updated up here. Now when we do that, the center of the circle station was at 10 plus 0, 0, and now it's been moved back to here. Well, maybe I didn't want that. Maybe I wanted 10 to stay there. That's not a problem as well. We'll highlight the alignment. We're going to go into the alignment properties, and we can adjust the reference point for our alignment. It'll say if I'm going to do that, if I have any station equations, those will be lost. That's fine. I don't have any. We'll select the center of the circle, and now the center will reference station 10 plus 0, 0. And if we come back and look at our alignment for our profile, we see that the stationing and the profile data has been updated accordingly. So very, very flexible environment with which to work. Um, as far as visualization, 
I've got a lot of white space above and below as I start using this for design. Maybe I'd like to see a little white space on the ends. We can do that very easily. Unlike Land Desktop, it was very regimented what we were in to try and add grids or white space to either side or the top or bottom was not a, uh, a very straightforward thing to do. Here I can select the profile view itself or the grid. We'll come into the profile view properties and there are some options. Let's grab this guy. Actually profile view style, we'll grab that. There is a grid tab here where I can start applying white space if you will to the grid around my profile. So I'd like to add some padding, perhaps two cells to the left, two cells to the right. We'll say OK, and now I have immediately created some additional white space to either side. So very, very flexible environment to work. If that starts to creep into my, my geometry, we can always move that up without any difficulties at all. So leveraging this as a tool to work with LAN Desktop, first off, we don't have to worry about any current settings. Uh, our alignment or our pro or our alignment or our surface because we can go ahead and select those from the the dialog the dialog itself is very simple and straightforward includes many of the same options that exist in land so picking that up will be will be fairly quick uh, in addition we have a number of tool tips and graphics that are going to assist us along the way so if we're going to create or do something with any of these options instead of it just picking it because you know that's the one to pick we get some additional information that is associated with that the environment is totally dynamic. So once again, if, if any of this needs to change, we can make a, a simple, uh, simple revision to that where it gets updated and the, the uh, resulting stuff downstream or the, uh, the data will take and propagate through the rest of the model. So the alignment updates, the resulting profile updates as well. Probably the most important thing is the environment is not a delete and redraw which is something that our legacy application land desktop as well as a lot of the other applications that are on the market it's all based on layers it just erases things and redraws it in civil 3d it is not a, a delete and redraw an environment but instead the model actually updates and we see the results of that so and finally visualization very flexible I can add cells I can make my design situation as uh, as comfortable um, as necessary for me to effectively work on my project. So with that being said, I've got my roadway geometry has been updated. I've extended it a little longer than it was. I've got a profile created. Let's export that so that we can use this Civil 3D as a tool to leverage it back in land. So I am going to export this data back out. We will go into Prospector here. I'm going to come down underneath Alignments and with our center line alignments here for First Street we will go ahead and I will export that to Land XML. In doing so that will export the alignment, the profile, as well as the existing ground surface that we've pulled because we are going back to Land 2009 or a previous version of Land we are going to do a Land XML schema 1.1 if we were going to an older version we could even go back to 1.0. We'll say OK I'm going to put that on my desktop for right now and we'll just call it existing profile. So that is saved. Let's flip back over to the LAN desktop environment and we're going to go ahead and, and bring that in. So our, uh, our alignment as we can see begins at uh, 10 plus 00. zero. We've got a profile. We should see the results of being 9 maybe a little bit higher going up through that ridge. Let's go ahead and uh, bring that in. So that is under the projects pull down. Once again very pull down driven. Import land XML. My dialog box continues to misbehave. We're going to come down and select that off the desktop the existing profile XML. We have one alignment it's going to bring that in. It is one new, one different from what we had available for import. That's fine. We have the alignment, conflict resolution. We'll go ahead and overwrite if necessary. So my import has been completed and you see the location of my uh, alignment um, has been revised from how we moved it. 
So let's go ahead and, uh, and take a look at the profile from that. We shouldn't have to pull a new one. We just have to take and create a profile. Actually, we have to get into the current uh, surface thing, so let's see what we're working with here. First street, that's the only one we have. Profile, we'll come down, create profile, we'll say full. From 9 to the end, once again, that's all been taken care of for us because it was produced via XML. I'll pick up near the top here, delete existing profile layers, yes, which is why you really need to be uh, aware of the... Uh, in fact, it's a delete and redraw operation, and there is our new profile as created via Civil 3D. So, with that being said, Civil 3D can be used as an effective tool as it relates to creating existing profiles and then migrating that back into our existing LAN desktop workflow.